She lost her husband, and now she's a single mom and a doctor. She's also my boss, and she always seemed so exhausted. Without thinking, I find myself wanting to offer her some help. My name's Mark Anderson. I'm just an ordinary single guy working as a nurse. Well, I've thought about settling down and getting married someday, but right now, I've got my niece who I've been raising like a daughter, so I'm not lonely. You see, my home situation is a bit unusual. My sister Emily became a mother when she was only 20 years old. She was married, but the guy was still a student. For whatever reason, they divorced before she gave birth and she returned home. Raising a child is hard work, honestly. She couldn't manage without help from everyone around her. I was considering moving out at the time, but I couldn't abandon my pregnant sister and aging parents, so I stayed. After a lot of struggle, my niece was born, but that was just the beginning. My niece Lily is a real crybaby, and it's all hands on deck for the family, especially when we have to tend to newborns every three hours. There were days I took over to give Emily some rest. Some may think that's a mom's job, but Emily was young and struggling to adjust to her new environment. But she's trying her best for her daughter. It's not like I'm going to get struck by lightning for helping out every now and then, right? As a nurse, I'm always ready to lend a hand. I'm good at taking care of people, and I have the stamina for it, so I was there to step up when Emily was worn out. Because of all this, I really adore Lily and treat her as if she were my own child. Lily is now five years old. She's becoming more independent and cheeky, but she's grown into a sweet little girl. Now that she's not a newborn, there's less for me to do. So I look for opportunities to do things for her, like taking her to her weekend activities, doing something for my cute niece, like dropping her off or often picking her up is no big deal. Having been involved in raising a child to some extent, I'm interested in marriage, but not seriously considering it because of Lily. Honestly, raising a child isn't as sweet as just feelings of cuteness and love. If I meet someone I'd like to raise a child with for the rest of my life, then maybe I'll consider getting married. That's the sort of situation it is. All right, enough about that. Listen to me. No way, as I was considering marriage alone, I was on a walk on my day off when I heard a child crying loudly nearby. The sound of a child crying, the temper tantrum. Small children have limited vocabulary. It's not unusual for them to have emotional outbursts when they can't express their feelings well. I thought to myself, this is tough, and looked towards the direction of the sound. There was a boy about five years old and a woman. Wait a minute. Olivia? Mark, what are you doing here? Seeing the woman who seemed to be the mother of the tantrum-throwing boy, I was surprised, and she looked just as astonished. Her name is Olivia Miller. She's a doctor in my superior. She's dedicated to her work, kind to everyone, but strict with herself. She's a very competent doctor, well liked by both staff and patients, or at least she was. No, she's still competent, and I still respect her. But last year, she lost her husband in an accident. Now she's a single mom, raising her son alone, which makes working late or night shifts difficult. She's still working hard while using daycare, but if her son gets sick, she has to leave work, which affects her job performance. As someone who has experienced raising a child, I admire Olivia and I understand that kids get sick all the time. But in a workplace full of single people, criticism from colleagues has been increasing recently. I'm sorry for the noise, just stop crying. While Olivia is scolding the boy, the boy's crying only gets worse. This situation is not ideal. I'm sorry, Miss Miller. What caused your son to start crying? He was going up the slide backwards a little while ago, 
when I told him it was dangerous and to stop, this is what happened. I see. I think to myself. Perhaps the boy wanted to play by climbing up the slide. When his mother stopped him due to the danger, he probably threw a tantrum because he didn't understand why it was dangerous in the first place. The boy's name is Ethan, so I squat down near Ethan and say, Ethan, you wanted to climb the slide, didn't you? Climbing slide? But you see, if you do that, other kids can't slide down. Why did you want to climb it? Because I want to go high up. I asked Ethan about his intentions, word by word. Turns out he just wants to climb up high, but he doesn't want to use stairs. After hearing this, I suggest the jungle gym to Ethan. It's higher than the slide and tough to climb, Ethan. You might not be able to make it. I said to him. Then Ethan suddenly stops crying and exclaims. I'll climb it. And he starts climbing all by himself. That's amazing. Until now, you wouldn't listen to anything I said. Maybe he sensed your anxiety, Miss Miller. What? Maybe Ethan wanted to climb up high and get praised. When you praise him, you smile. Maybe he wanted to see you smile in his own way. While saying this, I realized that the boy's behavior might have been driven by a simple desire for connection and understanding. I look at Ethan. I've had similar experiences a few times. Children pick up on their parents' anxiety and impatience. When children feel their parents are tired, they try to cheer them up in their own way. Well, in my case, I let Lily rest before she could throw a tantrum, so this was quite unusual. Sure enough, Ethan climbs to the top of the jungle gym and when misses. Smithfield praises him. He smiles as if nothing happened. Having cheered up, he starts playing on the swing and we sit down on a bench. Miss Miller's face is quite stern. I feel like I should listen to her. I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. I'm just causing trouble. You're not causing any trouble at all. More importantly, you don't seem to be okay. You seem quite tired. Have you been able to rest? As gently as I can, I ask her this question, and she begins to confess her true feelings, her voice trembling. Ever since my husband passed away, Ethan has stopped listening to me. So, I think he prefers his father to me. When I see him crying, I can't help but feel like I'm a failure as a mother. While saying this, she tries hard to hold back her tears. She's been pushing herself hard, and she talks to me about what happened after her husband's death. Ethan has become quite rebellious, possibly due to stress from his father's death, and he's even causing trouble at daycare, such as taking other children's toys and getting into fights, which has become unmanageable even for the teachers. A daycare teacher suggested counseling and Miss Miller tried it, but it seemed to pressure her even more. The counselor told me to get closer to my child, that I was lacking in love. It felt like they were saying that I, his mother, was inadequate in my love for him, and that's why things were going wrong. It felt like everything I'd done up until now was being denied. Honestly, it's been a shock. She cut her work hours to spend more time with Ethan, and that's why they were out here at the park. But he wasn't listening to her even outside, and because the park was near a road and there were other children, they couldn't let him run freely to prevent accidents and conflicts. In short, neither Ethan nor Miss Miller were able to relieve their stress, leading to a vicious cycle. At least I want to let Ethan play freely. I can't help but feel that a man is needed in situations like this. While watching Ethan play on the jungle gym again after the swing, Miss Miller speaks with a pained expression. Her parents are elderly, and she probably couldn't rely on anyone until now. Seeing her like this, I blurt out, what about trying a sports club? Before I realize what I said, she turns to me. Huh? Oh no, I was just wondering. How about enrolling him in the sports club that my niece goes to. 
In fact, my niece Lily had a time when she couldn't get into daycare. Of course, daycare isn't everything, but there are many things that can be learned there. Wanting to get her accustomed to group. Activities at least my sister had enrolled her in a sports club. There, Lily could move her body and play as much as she wanted, so she's still attending. For parents, they can watch their children be active, and once they are around elementary school age, parents only need to drop them off and pick them up. Parents should be able to secure some time for themselves. I've been accompanying Lily to the sports club, and it's a really nice place with good kids attending. I think they're conducting a free trial next week. Whether you want to join or not, I thought it might be a good experience for your son. I've never considered activities like these. She seemed surprised but thought things wouldn't change much. She agreed to come to the trial class with me next week, so I informed Lily about it. The trial includes playing with the regular children on the jungle gym, mats, and such. New kids start by learning simple games and warm-up exercises. If I suddenly bring a stranger, Lily might be surprised, but when I explained the situation, she seemed happy about having more friends, which put me at ease. Then came the day of the trial class. Miss Miller and Ethan appeared in track suits, which were recommended for easy movement. Honestly, Miss Miller was very nervous at first, but Ethan, who doesn't seem to be shy, quickly made friends with Lily and the others. He played with them, racing and playing ball without causing any issues. Lily, being the same age but already a member, acted like a big sister, lending him her ball and teaching him how to put on his shoes. Seeing Lily grow like this made me happy. Mom, look! I threw the ball all the way over there! Ethan, who had completely fit in, was proudly reporting his achievement in ball throwing to Miss Miller. Seeing his performance, Miss Miller was overjoyed. That's amazing! As she watched him play with the other children, she became teary-eyed. I haven't seen him so happy in a long time. It's a joy. At the workplace, I had never seen this side of Miss Miller. A gentle mother looked so lovingly at her son. Her figure was so beautiful that I got lost in admiration. But then, ouch! Hey, mister, don't get distracted. Lily had noticed my wandering gaze and threw a softball at me. It's scary to anger a woman, and I can't afford to upset my little princess. With Miss Miller, who was having a ball-throwing fun with Ethan in the corner of my eye, I enjoyed a spirited game of catch with Lily. After the sports club trial class, they seemed much brighter. Ethan liked the sports club and immediately said he wanted to go again next week. Miss Miller was also pleased that Ethan had something he wanted to do and decided to join. Since the club meets every Saturday, I ended up seeing Miss Miller there every week. I see her at work too, but it's a completely different atmosphere in her casual clothes. Honestly, my heart races. I can't help it, can I? She is a beautiful woman, but joining might have been the right decision. With plenty of play at the club, Ethan now sleeps soundly at night, has calmed down outdoors, and has stopped causing problems at daycare. Furthermore, Miss Miller has become more considerate, not just taking care of her son, but thinking about what he wants to convey. She's regained her cheerful color and is back to her gentle self. While there's still some criticism at work, trust from the patients has been gradually recovering and people are stopping complaining. I owe you, Mr. Anderson. I was really under pressure. I thought I had to do everything by myself, but that was just adding more stress to Ethan. Now I can breathe easier. Thank you so much. Miss Miller, who was playing with her son in her tracksuit today, came to thank me during the break. I replied with a smile. I'm glad you've got some breathing room. Let me know if you need anything. I'm pretty flexible lately. As Lily and Ethan play together, 
The bond between them grows stronger, and the challenges they face as single parents become a shared journey filled with understanding and support. I also get to play with him a lot. Thanks to that, I've become quite close to him. Then I've been invited for dinner by Miss Miller. It was an application for introducing me to the sports club, they said, and Ethan wanted to eat together, so I've been invited to their house. This is a surprising development, and I'm pretty, no, very excited. Of course, there's nothing indecent, but it's the house of such a beautiful woman. Of course, I'm happy, right? Well, this dinner ended up being mostly about playing with Ethan. After this, I got invited frequently to family outings with them. Sometimes, I get invited by Miss Miller, and even occasionally receive requests specifically from Ethan. Once, when we went to the dinosaur museum together, people around us mistook me for his dad. It was a little awkward, but Ethan happily declared, He's my other dad. I have two dads. That made me truly happy. So when he turned six, I discussed with Miss Miller or Olivia, and I asked him this. Ethan, if you're okay with it, can I live in your house too? You don't have to call me dad. You can keep calling me uncle. I just want to be part of your family. Can you guess what Ethan said after hearing me say this so seriously? Uncle, you're already a dad. He replied with an utterly bewildered look on his face. Both Olivia and I couldn't help but laugh at that. We realized that the only ones who were being formal about it were us adults. Ethan said he wished I'd become his dad. So let's do this together, okay? Olivia said to me after he went to sleep. I felt a renewed sense of responsibility. Olivia was previously married, and there was Ethan to consider as well. We knew we'd need money moving forward, so we decided not to have a wedding, but we did agree to take a picture together, just the three of us. Ethan was amazed by Olivia in her wedding dress, and while the photo session was a bit hectic with his curiosity about the equipment, we had a blast. On Olivia's finger were two wedding rings, and she was smiling happily. That was my idea. Olivia, if you're okay with it, would you wear your late husband's ring as well? What? Well, Ethan's dad is your late husband, and it just feels wrong to have only me in the picture. She laughed and said, It's exactly that about you I like as she slipped on her old wedding ring for the first time in quite a while. That should have alleviated my tension somewhat, but of course, it didn't. I looked pretty stiff in the photo, but there's nothing to be done about that. But I made sure to convey my feelings to the two of them. I looked straight at Olivia in her wedding dress and Ethan in his suit and I said, I love you, I adore you both. Aw, I love you too. Olivia responded, and I love you too, Dad. Ethan chimed in. Hearing those words, I couldn't help but hug them both as we all laughed together.